Sleekington flute. Cars being wrapped. The problem is, see the parts that weren't taken off and cleaned? It looks like this. See this? So today we're installing the StopTech brakes. So the whole thing was, at the beginning, it was just purely a drift car. And then it kind of turned, as we couldn't get parts and parts weren't available and just the whole coronavirus, everything, he kind of was like, okay, well, we can do like a couple track days in this car before we do it just purely as a drift car. So the idea was get some StopTech brakes, and that wouldn't hurt, obviously, to have good brakes on the front of the car. It looked good, brakes better, you know. And I honestly got a good deal. I was gonna have to get rotors and pads for that car anyway. And I was kind of like, or not, not for the front, but the rear definitely. And so I was like, you know what? I found a good deal on this and just kind of pulled the plug. But I actually talked to my dad because it's always nice to have someone there that knows what the hell they're doing more than me. My dad has way more experience, knows way more than me about cars and has been doing it a long time. There you go. Yeah, look at those pads. <laughs> it was funny because my dad kept assuming that I had tools. And he'd be like, oh, I just, can you grab me this? Or, and I'm like, uh, I don't have one of those. And he's like, oh, can you grab me this? I'm like, uh, I don't have one of those. So he didn't really bring much with him, again, assuming that I had tools. And so like halfway through, I'm kind of making runs to Home Depot. So this definitely took way longer than it should have. But I only started with cars maybe like, maybe even hard in the last like year, year and a half. So. It's just, it's just a learning process at this point. Test fitting the, uh, the adapter right now. The stop tech brakes. Well, it couldn't have been any closer to the, the duster, dust cover. So that was... Um... So it does fit with, with the dust cover still? Yeah. That was 16. So now let's figure out how it's routed. We can follow the line of the old one, right? Yep. If it was only in there. He ended up doing the passenger side. I kind of watched him through the whole process, helped him out, just kind of handed him stuff, just basically like assisted him on that. And then I did the driver's side. had an issue with the caliper rubbing on the wheels. It's kind of already bad news because we already had a rubbing problem with the bumper. So we had a five millimeter spacer, actually, sorry, we had a rubbing problem with the coilover and the bumper. So we already had rubbing issues and then throw on this and you're like, now we got one more spot where it's rubbed. Okay, so here's the dilemma. Right now, we've kind of tested this out and it's, we have a 20 on here right now because we're just gonna set it up like that to set the car down so it wouldn't rub on the caliper. So it rubs right now on the caliper, and this side 
this other side has a 10 on it. So this side right here has a 10 on it right now and it does not rub. So the solution is to, I have a 10 millimeter spacer on the rear of this car. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off this car and put it on there for now so that on Thursday I can drive this car and we won't be, well, we won't be rubbing. So I pulled that off, put it on there, and uh, I guess we're kind of good to go at that point. So when you guys watched me like paint correct in the car, one of my biggest things was I actually really liked the green. I thought it was a really solid color and I wanted to paint correct that and make it look good. But the problem was once, like I mentioned last video, once I got to the point of like the rear bumper and different parts, they were actually chipping. And from that point, it kind of felt like it was like, I'm gonna do all this work, it's not gonna work and it's gonna be a waste of time. Also, if I put like over fenders or do anything of that nature, I'm gonna have to paint so they match up. So in my mind, I was kind of like, if I wrap it, I don't have to worry about that. If I throw a wing on it, anything, I can just wrap that and make it match. Don't have, I don't have to mess with it. The color I went with is KPMF. It's called Autumn Fire, something like that. It's basically like a satin orange with this kind of like cool sheen to it. I don't know what to call it, but it's a, it's a unique looking color. I don't know how I always choose oranges because I don't actually really care for orange that much. I just somehow end up with these. I did the M3 in Fiery Orange and now this one in this Autumn Fire. Your pride, there's nowhere to hide. What would you decide when it's on the line? If it's do or die, would you compromise or would you stand through the storm and roll with the tide? Would you be the one to fight or the one to hide? You can never touch the sky if you don't try to fly. Rocky roads, but we stayed unshakable. Been through it all and we're still unbreakable. If you've never wrapped a car before, actually, it's not as hard as you think. I think it's hard to get it great but it's not that hard to get it good. So if you're kind of debating on wrapping a car, you can purchase a, a roll for like four or 500 bucks and wrap your own car. And there's definitely, it's definitely a lot of trial and error, but I feel like it's something that you could, you could learn. If you're, if you're willing to put the time and you can learn how to do it, it's not that hard and it saves you so much money by wrapping yourself than having someone else wrap. We got uh, two days from now, what's today, Tuesday, yeah. So two days from now, going to the skid pad at Apple Valley just to test this thing out, practice a little bit, and uh, it's leaking some fluid. So I moved it, because I was actually like uh, right alongside the M3, and when I moved it, it ended up, I noticed it was leaking something. So I'm gonna try to see where it's leaking and see if we can, just fi see if it's a quick fix, something we can figure out, or if it's, I don't know, if it's something that we gotta okay. stop. So we have to see if it ends here with a start there. Start Is I put a dye in the oil. Yeah. But you might you could probably just go to uh, and take a sample of this. To maybe AutoZone or someplace and say, is this power steering? If it is, then you know it's right here. I mean, could it be something as simple as one of those bolt spring loose or something? I really think I can see it inside here. It might be. Uh, why don't you pull up on the internet, say rack and pinion? for this car. What about the rack and pinion? Okay. It's not the dream plug, it's an adjustment bolt for the rack and pinion gear. It says loosen the banjo bolt on the fluid line to drain it, so it's not. 
Okay. Oh, you know what, though? Mm. Here's the thing. Ryan knows. Mm. They would have had to have put new fluid in there. Because there was nothing in there. Oh, yeah. So they put a new pump on. So, they, so it's pretty much, yeah, it's not as bad as I thought. What did they replace on power steering? Because now it all is kind of a story, you know. There was no fluid in there because it leaked out. So did they actually fix the pump? It should have been all new power steering. It should have been lines, pump, reservoir. Oh, oh and another thing you can smell. Smell this. Yeah, okay. Kind of like a oily burnt to... Yeah. Now, put your finger in that down there on the floor. Oh. <laughs> you, know, just, you know, just to get a little touch. And what does it smell like? Not as strong, but... Yeah, it's not as strong as that, for sure. Okay. See right there? In the bottom of that. So you don't know, is this new? No. Okay, so it could possibly be, take the strap out, it could possibly be leaking. There's a seal inside here. I mean, it's not like it's going to uh, not work. It's yeah. just going to rip. Are you serious? Uh, battery died? Damn it. Uh, God damn it. Um, there's some kind of battery leak going on too that we're trying to figure out, you know. It could be something as simple as just literally a light staying on. I just, we just don't know yet. So I'm literally having to like, kind of like leave it on a, a charger all the time right now to make sure it doesn't die. He had pointed out that the fan was coming on at the wrong times. And that was a little concerning, but we kind of just kept moving through it. It only comes on when it's 200. So it doesn't look like it's leaking that heavily, uh, obviously, if we have nothing no, coming out now. It just really worked it hard by trying to crank it in here, but, and, and it's hard too when you're, you should be moving when you turn your steering wheel. Yeah. Well, so full send. It's E85, so I have to get through the, I have to get through all of it. That's why, that's why I want to get another one. <laughs> Guys, we're almost there. We're almost to the first track day. This is what I've been looking forward to for the past couple months now to just get it out on the track, just drive this thing, get to actually enjoy it. I've been looking at it on our lift, I've been seeing like, and I'm sure you guys have too, as far as like cosmetically we've been messing with it, doing all this stuff, but we haven't really got to actually drive the damn thing more than just like the original test drive. So I just wanna drive it. And I wanna like, I wanna actually drive it. So we're almost there, almost, almost, a little bit left. But, you know, it's one of those things like, kind of dot your I's, cross your T's before you get out there. So hoping, you know, nothing happens.